Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, this is lecture 28 of basic calculus 1. If you remember, we had introduced the notion of definite integral, then discussed about the fundamental theorems of calculus. Fundamental theorem of calculus had two parts. One is how to show integral of the derivative and integral of f prime x equal to f of x, which is in the indefinite integral form. Also, you can express that in definite integral form. And uh, the other part was about derivative of the integral, right? d dx of integral a to x f t dt is equal to f of x. So, using these notions of fundamental theorem of calculus on definite integrals and indefinite integrals, we will try to solve some problems today. Okay, so, let us go to first example. Here we are asked to find the area of the region bounded by the x axis, the lines x equal to 0 and the line x equal to 2 pi and the curve y equal to sin x. So, we have plotted y equal to sin x this way. We want to compute the area of this region which is in blue and also yellow. So, it is the sum of these two areas that should give. Okay. So, now we proceed to find the area. Always we write since we are interested in the area not the signed area. So, that will be equal to integral from x from 0 to 2 pi of mod of the function. So, sin x is the function we have integral 0 to 2 pi mod sin x dx. Now, of course, at x equal to pi, the function is changing its sign from 0 to pi y equal to sin x remains positive. From pi to 2 pi, it becomes negative. So, mod sin x becomes sin x from 0 to pi and minus sin x from pi to 2 pi. So, we break that into two integrals. It is 0 to pi plus pi to 2 pi of mod sin x. Now, mod x mod of sin x becomes sin x here in 0 to pi and that is minus sin x from pi to 2 pi. So, we get these two integrals and their sum is the required area. Now, we integrate them. So, using our fundamental theorem, we know that minus cos x, if that is your function minus cos x, then its derivative is equal to sin x. So, the integral you see here is equal to integral 0 to pi minus cos x derivative dx. So, by fundamental theorem that should give minus cos x evaluated at pi minus minus cos x evaluated at 0 which we write this way with a vertical line 0 to pi. Then similarly, other one is cos x from pi to 2 pi because already minus sin x is there. So, this one gives really minus cos x prime for this one. And the second one is minus sin x, which is in the form pi to 2 pi cos x derivative dx. So, that gives you cos x in the integral. Now, we write them in the expanded form that gives minus of cos pi minus minus at cos 0. So, plus cos 0 plus cos 2 pi minus cos pi. And now, minus cos pi that gives 1, cos 0 gives 1, cos 2 pi is 1 and minus cos pi is again 1. So, you get answer as 4. So, see that is the way we have used fundamental theorem of calculus here. That integral of f prime x equal to f of x. But, suppose you take the signed area, 
then you would have taken integral 0 to 2 pi sin x dx and that would give you 0 because sin at this will give you cos of minus cos of 2 pi as 2 pi and at 0 they both are same. So, it gives it value 0. Also geometrically you can see this area equal to 2, this area equal to really if you take the integral pi to 2 pi of sin x that gives you minus 2. So, they really cancel and give you 0 in the signed area and you can revert back by telling it is minus 2 mod which is the area of the LO1. So, their sum gives you the actual area which is also equal to 4. So, let us go to second example. Here it is a slightly different one not exactly sin x, but something else, but similar y equal to x cubed minus x square minus 2 x is the curve. And we want to find the region bounded by this curve, uh, then uh, x axis which is y equal to 0 and the lines x equal to minus 1 and x equal to 2. So, they are the points where the curve really crosses the x axis. So, that makes it easier. But even if it does not cross, it will be something like this and you can take only integral up to those persons, right. Or if it goes beyond 2, then you may have to take this area also into consideration, okay. Now, this is our area to find out. So, then what do we do? We take the integral of mod. So, now we must find out what is the sign of the function when x varies from minus 1 to 2 because these are the two lines minus 1 to 2. Okay. So, what we see we can factorize x cubed minus x square minus 2 x take x as common you get uh, if you multiply them you get x square plus x minus 2 x which is x square minus x minus 2 x square minus x minus 2 times x. So, this is the correct factorization. Now, this means well x you can take out whether it is positive or negative. Now, let us think about minus 1 to 2. So, obviously, we break into at 0 that is what the geometry suggests. Now, the interval is minus 1 to 2. So, if you take the first interval minus 1 to 0, say x belongs to minus 1 to 0, then x it is somewhere here then x plus 1 is x minus minus 1 which is positive and x minus 2 which is negative because 2 is bigger than x and x is already negative. So, their product will be positive that is f x is greater than or equal to 0 at some point it can be 0 namely 0 and also at minus 1. So, f x is greater than or equal to 0 for minus 1 less than or equal to x less than 0 that is what the graph also says. Next, if you go to any point between 0 and 2, x is positive, x minus 2 is negative, x plus 1 is positive, so you would get negative that is f x is less than or equal to 0 for 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 2 and that is also shown correctly in the picture. So, then the area will be modulus of this from minus 1 to 2 integral that we can now break mod f x we know it is equal to f of x when it is from minus 1 to 0 and it is minus f of x when f x is x is in 0 to 2. So, you would write that as two integrals it is mod f x f x that is x cubed minus x square minus 2 x when x is from minus 1 to 0 and it is minus of x cubed minus x square minus 2 x when x is from 0 to 2. Then we integrate. So, here we use fundamental theorem x cubed integral is x fourth by 4 because if you differentiate x fourth by 4 you would get back x cubed and then minus x square gives minus x cubed by 3 minus 2 x gives minus x square that has to be evaluated at 0 evaluated at minus 1 and subtracted. So, this is the notation we just omit this vertical bar sometimes when there is a bracket already. So, that is just a simplification of the notation. Then similar thing comes here but with the negative sign 
and the outside it is 0 to 2. So, we write their values. So, at 0 this becomes 0 at minus 1 this is minus 1 to the power 4 by 4 minus minus 1 cubed by 3 minus minus 1 square. So, that gives you 1 divided by 4 and this becomes plus 1 by 3 and this is minus 1. Similarly, the other one if you take at 0 it is gone at 2 only there. So, it is minus minus at 2 it is 2 to the power 4 by 4 minus 2 to the power 3 by 3 and minus 2 square. So, if you simplify you would get 5 by 12 this is your 5 by 12 and this gives you 8 by 3. So, that means the area here in the blue one is 5 by 12 and the brown one is 8 by 3 right minus 8 by 3 if you take the signed area. So, but automatically this minus goes because we have gone mod f x. So, this becomes 5 by 12 plus 8 by 3 which it should and then you get the area as 37 by 12. So, again because throughout it is negative. So, you could have taken its signed area modulus to get the area and add them off that is same thing as whatever calculation has been done here. Okay. So, we go to next example. Here we are not computing the area, but something else is asked. The function f of x equal to x to the power minus 2 is non-negative on minus 1 to 1. Okay. That is clear and minus 1 to 1 f x d x must be non-negative because of this argument we are thinking that if integrand function is non negative then integral also should be non negative. But if you calculate exactly minus 1 to 1 x to the power minus 2 d x is minus x to the power minus 1 evaluated at 1 and minus 1. So, that gives minus 1 to the power minus 1 minus minus 1 to the power minus 1. So, that gives minus 1 this is again minus 1. So, you get minus 2 why is it happening? We first thought that my integral minus 1 to 1 must be non negative, but if you compute actually we are getting minus 2, what is the reason? Well, reason is not difficult to give. The first line itself, if you see, it is non negative, but then there is a caveat there. We see that it is not defined at x equal to 0, it blows off, right. So, f x is not defined really on minus 1 to 1, it is not a function over minus 1 to 1. Of course, it is defined on minus 1 0 to 0 to 1. So, we could have broken that into sum of two integrals using our convention. If at one point is not defined, so you can break it say of course, it will be a different problem, it will be something like minus 1 to 0 x to the power minus 2 plus integral 0 to 1 x to the power minus 2. What about this integral? Even if it is not defined at 0, this integral may be defined. Well, but what happens near 0, x becomes very large, 1 by x to the power minus 2 becomes very large when x approaches 0. So, this function is really unbounded. So, since unbounded, it might become infinity in minus infinity or whatever. There is no minus because it is non negative. So, it become infinity. That means, its integral does not exist. Right? If it is unbounded, we have defined only integrals for bounded functions. So, this integral since integrand is unbounded, this integral does not exist and that is the reason for this paradoxical result. You can manipulate in many ways to get different results also right? because the integral does not exist. Okay, that is just a quiz type of problem. We have to really be careful whether the, it is a function or not whether it is becoming bounded or unbounded in its domain, those have to be seen before applying our fundamental theorem of calculus, because that assumes all these things that the integrals exist. In fact, that should be continuous and so on. Okay, let us go to next problem. We want to find an antiderivative of this function, which is given as 1 by 3 x to the power minus 2 by 3 plus 4 times 
second 3x into tan 3x. So, antiderivative means whose derivative will be this function, right. So, we go straight forward because we can use our limit properties like integral of f plus g will be integral of f plus integral of g provided they exist. So, we go for the indefinite integrals. Now, 1 by 3 x to the power minus 2 by 3 would give us this 1 by 3 1 divided by 1 minus 2 by 3 x to the power 1 minus 2 by 3 plus c 1 for some constant that is the antiderivative general antiderivative. So, that we can express as x to the power 1 by 3 plus c 1. Okay. Similarly, integral of second 3 x tan 3 x is 1 by 3 second 3 x because if you take second 3 x differentiate it, it would give uh, second 3 x into tan 3 x into 3. So, we have divided 1 by 3 plus c 2. So, the antiderivative will be sum of these two, but be careful where it is defined, wherever it is defined this will be the antiderivative that is the meaning. At x equal to 0 of course, the function itself is not defined fine. Okay. So, we go this is just using the limit properties and of course, fundamental theorem of calculus which is always used implicitly. So, you want to find the indefinite integral of this function 4 plus root x by x cubed plus 2 by 5 tan square x. Sometimes it is better to expand it and write separately as sum of some things so that we can use our earlier theorem. So, it is really 4 x to the power minus 3 plus x to the power half minus 3. So, that is minus 5 by 3 and plus 2 by 5 tan square x that is how it looks. So, we have to find indefinite integral of this, indefinite integral of this, indefinite integral of this and then add them up. So, you go for x to the power minus 3 first, it is 4 times that. So, x to the power minus 3 is x to the power m plus 1 divided by m plus 1 for m not equal to 1. So, that is x to the power minus 2 by minus 2 plus c 1. Similarly, minus 5 by 2 gives x to the power minus 5 by 2 plus 1 which is minus 3 by 2 divided by minus 3 by 2 plus c 2. And then for tan square x, we see it is second square x minus 1 and second square x we get by differentiating tan x, 1 we get by differentiating x. So, its integral is tan x minus x plus c 3. Then we multiply with appropriate constants and get back our indefinite integral. So, integral of f x which is uh, this one is 4 times the first integral then plus the second integral plus 2 by 5 times the third integral. So, it is 4 times this, 4 times uh, this one so, plus 4 times c 1, 4 something times c 2, some constant times c 3. So, they are all accommodated in plus c constant. So, we just go for their part where c is not there. And first one is minus 2 x to the power minus 2 by minus 2, second one is x to the power minus 3 by 2 by minus 3 by 2 third one gives 2 by 5 times tan x minus x okay, plus a constant. So, you simplify that becomes this one minus 2 by x square minus 3 by 2 into x to the power 3 by 2 plus 2 tan x by 5 minus 2 x by 5 plus a constant that is the indefinite integral. So, we are going in detail now after some time you will do it quickly and get used to it. Okay. Let us get the third problem. We want to find one function f of x that satisfies two conditions. One is its derivative is 8 x plus cos x square x and when it is evaluated at pi by 2, we should get minus 7. So, that means our constant will be accommodated in such a way that f of pi by 2 should be equal to minus 7. First thing is we should find one indefinite integral here. Okay. So, this f prime x is really anti f x will be really anti derivative of f prime x. So, you compute for first the anti derivative of 8 x plus cos x square x and that is easy. 
because 8x uh, integral will give 4x square because if you differentiate 4x square you get back 8x and if you differentiate cot x you get minus cos x square x. So, it is minus cot x plus c that is the indefinite integral. Then we go for evaluating the c finding out this c so that the other condition is met. Other condition is f of pi by 2 which is minus 7 that is given. So, evaluating the left side we get 4 into pi square by 4 minus uh, cot of that is 0 and plus c that is equal to minus 7 on the left side that is on the right side it is pi square plus c. So, minus 7 equal to pi square plus c or c equal to minus 7 minus pi square then we plug it into whatever we have got earlier f x equal to that expression and we get the required f of x so, that is quite straightforward. Now, we go to next problem we want to evaluate this definite integral right. So, the limits are from 0 to pi and the integrand is 2 times cosine square of x by 2 plus half times cosine x plus mod cosine x. <coughs> so, look at mod cosine x. So, we must find out when is cosine x positive when it is negative in the interval 0 to pi when x varies from 0 to pi. So, first thing we get is when you take 0 to pi uh, we see that mod cosine x uh, so that is cosine x let us say cosine x from 0 to pi by 2 it remains positive from pi by 2 to pi it becomes negative. So, we should break this interval 0 to pi to two different integrals for evaluating the second expression. But first expression we have no problem it is cosine square x by 2. So, that is always of the same sign it is positive. So, we go straight forward for the first integral as 0 to pi 2 cosine square x by 2 which is 0 to pi 1 plus cosine x using your cos 2 x formula. So, whose integral is x 1 gives x and cosine x gives sin x because sin x derivative is cosine x. So, that is to be evaluated at 0 and pi definite integral. So, we get back pi and for the second one. So, since cosine x mod equal to cos x for x in 0 to pi by 2 and mod cosine x which is minus cosine x for x in minus pi by 2 to pi because cos x becomes negative. So, mod cos x becomes minus cos x. So, we divide that for integral 0 to pi of this second one into two definite integrals one is 0 to pi by 2 another is pi by 2 to 0 ok. So, what happens for x in 0 to pi by 2 we go for this expression first this is half of cosine x plus cosine x which is 2 cos x and for the second one when x belongs to pi by 2 to pi cos x mod becomes minus cos x. So, this becomes 0 right. So, cos x plus mod cos x is 0. Therefore, the integral from 0 to pi is really integral from 0 to pi by 2 other side becomes 0. So, you get 0 to pi half of cosine x plus mod cos x dx as 0 to pi by 2 and this is 2 cosine x. So, divided by 2 that gives cosine x and its integral is sin x evaluated as 0 to pi by 2 which is 1. So, the required integral definite integral is sum of these two integrals which is pi plus 1 ok. So, we have to be concerned about where the function becomes positive and negative because it was mod that is the only thing done in this problem. Otherwise, it is straightforward application of fundamental theorem.